Hello, and welcome to Canadian Rights Reviews, where we examine the ins and outs of Canadian rights, freedoms, laws, and policies. Today's video comes to us from What's Up Canada and highlights the story of former Saskatoon police officer Nathan Linchuk. While I want to mostly highlight his story, I am also going to be calling out the bias of the self proclaimed objective mainstream media. Anti mask has become the tagline for mainstream media, for any story related to anything going against the officially accepted narrative. It is a simple two word hyphenated catchphrase that embodies the anxiety many have related to our current health climate. While there certainly are some who fit into the label of denier, and there is disinformation out there, there is also information that is reputable and relevant, that is largely not being reported by the mainstream media. The imbalance has become so extreme, people on both sides of the argument are quick to use terms such as disinformation and fake news. In my opinion, on both sides the trend has largely become to vilify the opposing opinion and ignore the inconvenient truths. Somewhere in the middle, is a growing group of people who are losing their businesses, their livelihoods, not receiving medical care, and numerous other scenarios. The issue for some, are what appears to be a very arbitrary application of rules, which appear to play favorites with large multinational corporations. What is at the core of all the civil unrest in this country, is the infringements of civil liberties in the name of public health care. Those infringements are not limited to masks. I would implore mainstream media to start reporting the news, the actual story, and to stop slapping on a tagline clearly intended to slant the story. In the online video platform world that practice is known as clickbait. While effective in the short term, it is not well received and has a limited lifespan before people just stop clicking. On April 24, 2021, a Children's Day event was held in a park in Saskatoon. According to those that participated it was just a day for the kids to be kids and have fun. There were no speeches or protest signs. The mainstream media reported it as an anti-mask event, and individuals went on to vilify the parents for putting those children in harm's way. What was not reported, was those same children attend school together every day, without wearing masks, except in high-traffic indoor areas such as hallways and school buses, as per the Saskatchewan Safe Schools Plan. Nathan Linchuk attended this event with his children. We'll let him take it from here. On April 24th of uh, just this year, uh, Saskatoon actually held a Children's Freedom Rally Day. Um, and that day I wanted to bring my family, I wanted to, my family to have a normal day for once, and my kids to uh, go into a park and play and have a normal day with other kids. Um, so we decided to go to the uh, Freedom Rally that day, the Freedom Children's Rally, and I let my kids have a normal day for once. Um, it was an awesome day, super nice, all the kids played with other kids, got their faces painted, it was a great day. Um, what ended up actually happening, uh, Saskatoon City Police actually did have uh, other, sorry, members of the service there watching over the watching over the, the, the children's event in the park. Um, also, people taking pictures there at the park, uh, just other Saskatoon Police uh, officers. I was photographed at the uh, event. Um, this was brought to my superiors at the service, and obviously I was contacted uh, on Sunday evening before I had to go back to work on Monday morning and told I wasn't allowed to come back into work. Uh, because I was alleged to have attended a Children's Freedom Rally. Um, a was, Children's Freedom Rally? Yeah, a Children's Freedom Rally. So it was just a children's event. There was actually even no speeches about what was going on, nothing in those regards. It was just a day in the park for the kids to just have a fun, normal day. Kids being kids. Yeah, kids being kids, exactly. Um, and after this uh, year long of them not being able to see as many of their friends, stuff like that, uh, I wanted to give my kids something normal. I wanted to give them something um, that they could look forward to. So can you describe the feeling that you felt from the kids that day, maybe, before we go any further? Well, my kids haven't stopped thanking me since. Uh, I've right, taken uh, them that day. Nice. Um, and it's a pretty good feeling uh, when you got your kids uh, thanking you for these sort of things, especially when you haven't seen it in the past 12 months. Um, and I guess the, the big thing for me is is that I've, I've always been a man who's put his family before his job. And that's what it was. It was, what it was. it was a job at the end of the day. And it was a job that was starting to ask me to do things that I wasn't comfortable doing and things that I didn't swear an oath to do. Uh, I'm very much a believer in that we are a police service, that we are a service to the people. We're not a service to government officials. We're not henchmen for government officials. We serve the people. Um, and I've you. carried that every day uh, in my job. And I was involved in a lot of major incidents at work. Um, in the eight years that I was there. Um, and it's very disheartening when you start to see um, 
your own police service uh, stand for something that isn't right and stand for things that uh, are not serving the people but actually becoming a detriment to society itself. Uh, and so basically back to my story of what happened, uh, my spirits contacted me and basically told me that every day uh, when I showed up to work for the rest of the week I had to stay inside the office, had to stay at a compu- had to stay behind a computer screen at, screen at my desk, I do my work from there. Uh, and as a police officer, I'm not one of those police officers. I was a guy who liked to be out in the community with people, uh, talking to people, just seeing what was going on. Um, help people as much as I can. Um, so naturally, that wasn't something I was going to agree with or do. Um, another thing uh, was I was going to have to partake in a rapid test before work in the mornings before work. And since giving you this interview, I, <laughs> I can assure you that I don't believe in doing those things, especially when I feel <laughs> fine. Um, uh, right on. We are, every day I'd, when I was in the patrol unit at work, every day we put our lives on the line. Well, not just me, just lots of others uh, in law enforcement and everything. A lot of good people in that, in that profession who do these things and stand for the right things. And uh, we have suspects trying to harm us in any way they can, trying to kill us some at the end of the day. And the government's going to try to tell us how to be safe and how to be scared. At the end of the day, um, there was a leak inside the service. Uh, The media got a hold of the fact that there was an SPS officer at the Freedom Rally. Um, I didn't by any means say I was Saskatoon Police by anything like that. I didn't advertise it to people. I didn't even say I was a police officer. Um, you were a dad having fun with his kids. That's and his exactly wife. what it was, and that's and that's what I am first, and that's what I that's what I wanted to really hit home with uh, my service was that my allegiance lies with my family, not my not my job, because they're the ones who are going to be around at the end of it, not them. Amen. So, at the end of the day, um, I decided to resign, um, and I don't want anyone to think in this world that I resigned because I was because I was scared of reprimands or anything in those regards. I just stood for something bigger. And I wasn't willing to uh, be punished for, at the end of the day, letting my kids play in a park with other kids. And that's that's basically what they tried to do to me. And I guess if I got anything to say to anyone out there, um, as a police officer and stuff, and seeing that side of things, is uh, to other police officers out there, don't be afraid to stand up, guys. Because... At the end of the day, we're we're what keeps society together. We're what keep everyone safe. Don't perpetuate fear, because that's not what we are as police officers. We're supposed to perpetuate courage and standing up for what's right. And what's going on right now isn't right, guys. And everyone should know that. And don't be afraid to stand for that stuff, because as soon as we stand up, then this is all over, guys. And we can go back to being normal. We can go back to being human beings. We can go back to dancing, singing. We can go back to just having a normal life. Dancing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, oh, I missed that. I can't believe how much I missed dancing. So at the end of the day, just stand up for what you believe in, guys. Because that's all that matters. Because if we don't stand by our morals and our values, and we don't stand up for our children, then what do we have left? We got nothing left. In response to this video from Mr. Linchuk, the CBC clickbait headline has labeled him as a crackpot spreading misinformation. CTV took a similar approach stating Mr. Linchuk, drank the Kool-Aid of propaganda. Hypocrisy much CTV. Legal actions related to civil liberties infringements are another area that is seeing little reporting in the mainstream media. Recently 19 active and retired police officers in Ontario have banded together to bring suit against the government in regards to declarations of emergency and public health measures contravening the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Stand Up Canada maintains a website referencing many lawsuits around the world related to civil liberties infringements. 36% of those suits have been filed in Canada. For Nathan Linchuk, for the other police out there in Canada and around the world that are not simply following orders, but instead are questioning the lawfulness of such orders and considering the rights and freedoms of the people. I applaud you all. The integrity of law enforcement has, and is taking a beating. Rightfully so in many cases. However, such actions give me hope. Thank you for that. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.